Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist, and we bring this podcast to you every Wednesday as a veterinarian, as a technician, as a dentistry team to help you be even better at veterinary dentistry in your practice. We're sponsored and partnered today with the Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. If you're interested in being among the best anywhere in general practice as a team in veterinary dentistry, I invite you to request an invitation. Just go to ivdi.org slash inv, like invitation, first three letters, inv. So ivdi. International Veterinary Dentistry Institute, ivdi.org slash INV, and we'll get you the information that you need. What are your thoughts, opinions on Oravet? If you use it, do you get it to stay on the pet's teeth? Um, and and Oravet um, has been a challenge for folks. Um, we, we love Oravet. Oravet is one of those products that's fairly benign. Um, especially the in-hospital um, application. It's more or less kind of like a real thick Vaseline. So there's no issues with food allergies, GI upset, anything like that. And it is very easy to apply. The trick is to make sure that you're doing it quadrant by quadrant and that you're drying the teeth with your air water syringe. The surface has to be perfectly dry to get that on there and to get it to stick. If there's any moisture at all, or if you dry that quadrant and the lip falls back down, um, now we've got that slimy layer on there, it's not gonna stick. You've gotta hold that lip up, dry, and then apply. So the tooth has to be perfectly dry, any moisture at all, and it's it's not gonna stick. And then we apply Oravet um, primarily um, any patient that is having oral surgery because we wanna make sure that we're still doing some type of plaque prevention, and we can't do any chews, we can't do brushing, we can't do any of that for at least a couple of weeks until all of that heals. So that Oravet application in hospital is their home care for the next couple of weeks. We can be confident that that is going to prevent plaque. It actually is, um, the home care is effective for a whole month, but they can start up their home care um, uh, in two weeks. Complete tissue healing takes place in about two weeks. So uh, we absolutely love Oravet, uh, especially for uh, post-op um, oral surgery cases. Do you do use different types of profi, profi paste or just stick to one standard option? Uh, Carissa, good question. The brand doesn't matter. Um, we just look for um, fine grit. That's the, that's the parameter for uh, correct uh, profi polish. While doing the profi, should the technician wear eye protection as well as mask and gloves? Um, I worry about anything. Yeah, that's um, absolutely standard protocol. And I, um, I usually have glasses and or loops. So I do have eye protection. And then, um, yeah, all of that stuff is aerosolized. So we are using uh, wearing gloves, wearing a mask for um, our PPE to uh, protect us over, you know, if we're going to be doing this for years and years and years, we want to make sure that we're doing things uh, ergonomically and uh, as safely as possible for our long career in dentistry. When stomatitis is discovered in a patient, is full mouth extraction always necessary? Can antibiotic therapy help? And uh, again, great question. Glad you asked this. Um, <clears throat> stomatitis is one of those conditions that medical management has been tried for many many years and nothing has been proven to be successful unfortunately um, <clears throat> with any of our um, patients that um, have stomatitis number one we want to diagnose it correctly and stomatitis needs to look like this where we have caudal mouth caudal mucosal inflammation and stomatitis often gets confused with um, uh, juvenile onset gingivitis. 
which is just gingivitis adjacent to the teeth. So if there is no caudal mucosal inflammation, um, then there is, uh, it is not a true stomatitis case. But a true stomatitis case, and here are the stats here, 70% is curative in patients that we do full mouth extractions, curative. That statistic goes up the younger they are and the less time that they're on steroid therapy. As far as antibiotics go in treating this, again, a short course if there's active pus and, and um, associated periodontal disease, which can be in conjunction with stomatitis. But stomatitis in and of itself is not infectious. It's inflammatory. And so antibiotics really aren't warranted. We want to try and stay away from steroids until we can get these patients treated. And pain management, this is a case where we would do aggressive pain management until we could get these cases in and treated. Medical management, um, these cats are miserable. They are in a um, heightened state of pain all the time. And um, depo and antibiotics once a month is absolutely inappropriate. And that's how the majority of these cases are treated, unfortunately. And so we're trying to, again, educate and um, you know, these are absolutely one of those cases that you can diagnose and refer um, and refer as soon as possible. And we're more than happy to see these patients on a consult only, have them talk to the board of dentists and get clear recommendations and move forward from there. That shouldn't have to fall on your shoulders. This is a, this is a diagnosis that's advanced dental disease that certainly um, getting a board of dentist involved is one of those cases where we want to definitely refer for appropriate treatment, but the sooner the better. If you find a fractured tooth without pulp exposure um, or discoloration, will you leave it or recommend extraction? So um, with these particular teeth, uh, number one, we're gonna to wanna to see what the x-ray looks like. If there's no radiographic changes and no pulp exposure or discoloration, the dentin is still exposed. And so these teeth still need to be treated um, not necessarily extraction. We can uh, seal these teeth with a bonding agent. We smooth it with a particular type of burr, seal that dentin so that's not um, exposed and hopefully we can catch that before the tooth becomes compromised because the dentin communicates directly with the pulp. So we've got to seal that and then we re-x-ray that tooth oh eight or ten months down the road confirm that the tooth is still vital radiographically, and then depending on the tooth and how big the defect is, we may recommend uh, placing a titanium crown to keep that tooth functional for the remainder of that dog's life. Uh, some questions regarding oral masses, and I'm glad you uh, asked these questions, Harley, Carissa, and Emma. All great questions, and anytime we see abnormal tissue in the oral cavity, uh, number one, we're going to remove it, um, and depending on how big it is or not, we're going to remove it fully to the normal gingival margin, or just take a sample of it, biopsy, biopsy, biopsy. Always, always, always need to confirm any abnormal tissue is not something that we need to uh, move forward and treat, or we do. We need to have that question answered. Um, and so we will, um, we will always um, send out tissue. Um, that's just a standard of care, as well as evaluate with dental x-ray. The good news is most oral masses are benign, but some can be more locally invasive than others. And so we always want to get a definitive diagnosis so that we can do the appropriate treatment. And again, the earlier we find this stuff and diagnose it, the better. We never uh, remove tissue and, um, and not have it biopsied. Um, regardless of finances, um, that's our recommendation. They certainly can decline it with the understanding that it may or may not come back and we need to monitor if they decline the biopsy histopathology. Do you ever run into an issue where the tissue is too friable to close? Um, very rarely, there are those instances, especially um, with those um, smaller patients 
where they've got generalized periodontal disease and a lot of infection, a lot of infected bone, a lot of infected tissue. But this is where I was talking about that advanced oral surgery where um, this may be a case that needs to be referred because of the advanced disease, the debridement that needs to happen, and all that friable tissue needs to get out of there and then closed with healthy margins. Very rarely are we not able to do that. And so that's just a, a skill set that not all general practitioners have or are expected to have. Your skill set is to assess, diagnose, and refer if needed, unless your skill set allows um, for that higher level of advanced oral surgery. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like more information about the Veterinary Dental Practitioners Program, please submit to request an invitation at ivdi.org slash inv.